Automation. VST Automation allows changes to your mix to be recorded or programmed to ensure that you have the perfect balance for every section of your song. Recording automation data is more usually called writing that data and it doesn't use the normal record function. Rather, you should enable the red Automation Write button by the transport section. While this is enabled, any changes you make to any filter parameters will be written as automation data. If the Automation Read button is enabled, those parameters will then follow the automation curve when you play back the edit. You can view the data you just created by dragging the little A symbol from the top right corner of a track lane and dropping it onto the filter you just automated. A list of parameters will appear with active ones highlighted in a different colour. Whichever parameter you choose will then have its automation displayed on that track lane superimposed on any clips. Alternatively, you can click the A symbol and view a list of all that track's parameters or all active parameters. This data does not live on this track, however. It is tied to the filter it automates rather than to any tracks or clips, and the data can be viewed on any track lane. This allows you to use blank tracks as automation lanes if you wish, and you can create several of these if you need to edit automation for several parameters at once. I usually delete the volume and pan and level meter filters from tracks that I use as automation lanes so they don't look like subgroups. To edit the data, zoom the track lane as needed and hover the mouse cursor over the automation curve so the nodes appear. If you click on the curve, it will change colour to indicate it is selected. We now have various options in the properties panel. Simplifying the curve will thin out the data by removing points with options to simplify the entire curve or just the marked region and a choice of three strengths. Likewise, points can be deleted from just the marked region and you can choose whether or not subsequent data is moved back to fill the gap. If you delete all points from a curve, that parameter will no longer show as active in the list. Each point can be edited manually by left clicking and dragging or deleted by double clicking. You can drag regions of the curve up or down, and if you double click the curve you will create a new node at that point. You can also displace the entire curve up or down by dragging in the Displace Curve field, or you can scale it with the Scale Curve field, and these can be applied to just the marked region using the button underneath. If you hold Control while dragging a section of the curve between two points, Extra points will be created automatically to form a step rather than a ramp. If you hold Ctrl and Shift while dragging a point, all subsequent points will move with it. Alternatively, you can enable the Auto Lock function to force automation to move along with any clips on that track. In between each pair of nodes is an extra curve node of a slightly different colour. If you hover the mouse cursor over this point, the tooltip will tell you the current curve value. A curve value of zero will result in a straight line between the two points, but you can drag this node up or down to create non-linear curves instead. Setting this value to one or minus one will result in a sharp step. To copy automation data, position the markers around the desired section and press the Copy Marked Region to Clipboard button in the Properties panel. You can then either move the markers or position the cursor to define where the data will be pasted. Or you can select another automation parameter and paste the data onto that instead. Another way to copy automation is to copy the filter it is tied to. Any automation for that filter will also be copied for the new filter. 
You can therefore copy volume automation to another track by copying the volume filter. You can then either delete the original volume filter or leave it in place so you can still adjust that track's overall level without needing to scale the automation data. Be aware that if the track is inside a folder, you will need to enable the Ignore VCA option for one of the volume filters. Otherwise, any volume changes you make with the folder's VCA filter will affect that track twice. When writing automation data, it is often easier to use knobs or sliders on a hardware controller than to perform the changes with the mouse. Traction therefore allows incoming MIDI controller data to be mapped to automation parameters. From the Automation menu, select Create MIDI Controller Mappings and click the field in the top right that says Click here to choose a parameter. The list that pops up contains all the filters in the edit grouped according to the track or rack they are inserted on. Locate the filter you wish to control and pick a parameter from the list or choose Add All, which will create mappings for every parameter. You can navigate through this list using the up and down arrow keys, and you can remove mappings by pressing Delete. Now you can click to choose a MIDI controller for each parameter you set up. This will activate a MIDI Learn function, so simply wiggle the controller you wish to link to that parameter, and Traction will do the rest. For example, if I move the modulation wheel on my MIDI keyboard, Traction will assign that parameter to MIDI controller 1 and will display the position of the controller as a percentage when I move it. If I now close the MIDI controller mappings window, I can control the selected parameter via the mod wheel. And if I turn on the automation write button, all my changes will be written as automation data. These controller mappings are stored with each edit. If you create a mapping for a certain filter that you would like to use in other edits, right-click one of the mappings, choose Save Preset and give it a name. Next time you need to use this mapping, you can right-click a destination, choose the preset, then tell Traction which filter to apply it to. If you wish to set up a control surface globally to control all your edits, switch to the settings page and select the control surfaces tab at the bottom. If your device is listed under supported control surfaces, then simply select that device from the list and choose the MIDI input and output to which it is connected. If your device is not listed, you will need to create a custom mapping. Click the Add Custom Control Surface button and give your device a name. It will then appear in the list and you can assign it a MIDI input. Now you will need to press Edit Control Mappings to define what each control actually does. Again, you can click the controller list on the left to engage MIDI Learn and choose destinations from the list on the right but now we have a much greater range of options, including transport and navigation controls, as well as all the mix parameters for up to 16 channels at a time. We also have switch fader bank options, which will allow you to control different groups of channels. For example, if you set up a controller to provide volume and pan controls for the first eight channels, You can use the Switch Fader Bank Write 8 option to switch your control to channels 9 to 16 or 17 to 24, and use the Switch Fader Bank Left 8 option to switch back again. The channels you control in this way will be highlighted in a different colour if you enable the Colour Selection button in the settings page, and you can specify the colour for each controller so that if you have more than one hardware controller, you can easily see which of them is currently affecting a specific track.
when you are happy with your mapping, you can export the settings as a track controller file via the properties panel so that it can be imported into other copies of Traction. 